Hi, I'm Dr. Vidushi Sharma from Suvi Eye Institute, uh, Kota, Rajasthan in India. And in this video, we demonstrate the technique of the use of botulinum toxin injection for the treatment of hemifacial spasm. The same technique is of course also used for the treatment of blepharospasm by the use of botulinum toxin injections. Now in this case here, we are using the product Botogeni, which is a botulinum toxin type A available in the Indian market by a vaccine making company by the name of Biomed. Uh, this uh, has been used by us for almost uh, two, uh, two to three years now and has given very good results. So as you can see here, this uh, patient of about 50 years of age has a severe hemifacial spasm affecting the left side of the face. Uh, the spasms were very frequent in this particular patient to the extent that it was difficult for him to carry out his routine task because of the constant irritation of the uh, twitching movements. Now as we all know hemifacial spasm is characterized by the abnormal uh, twitching and uh, movements of the uh, facial muscles on one side of the face uh, that are supplied by the facial nerve. Uh, the eye is very prominently affected. Uh, because of the orbicularis uh, muscle and also uh, some patients have uh, muscles affected uh, on the cheek and the mouth also and therefore they may have a uh, retraction of the mouth along with the uh, frequent closure of the eyelid as seen here. While in blepharospasm it is uh, both sides that are normally affected uh, though one may be involved more than the other and it is mostly affecting the orbicularis oculi that is the uh, muscles around the eye which have an involuntary forced repetitive closure of the eyelids and the patient does not have control and finds it difficult to open them when he suffers an attack of uh, these spasms. Now this is the Botogeni uh, that is available and this comes in the standard packing with a freeze dried preparation of the botulinum toxin in one vial and the a normal saline for reconstitution in the other vial. Now for the initial treatment we use a 50 unit vial. The diluent is first taken into a syringe. Uh, different uh, surgeons and ophthalmologists or neurologists have different preferences for the amount of fluid to be used as a diluent and the final concentration that they want. Uh, what we have used here is 2 ml of normal saline to reconstitute 50 units of boto, uh, botulinum toxin which gives us a final uh, concentration of 2.5 international units of the toxin in each 0.1 ml of the uh, reconstituted solution. So the normal saline is taken into a 2 ml syringe and this, this 2 ml of diluent is then placed into the vial containing the freeze dried preparation of the botulinum toxin and the vacuum inside the vial automatically draws the fluid inside. Normally most of the powder would dissolve in the uh, diluent on its own. Vigorous shaking is to be avoided as we do not want to agitate the solution and form too many bubbles. A small degree of bubbles are normal in such uh, powders uh, and are uh, common and do not have any uh, bearing. We then draw this fluid into a tuberculin syringe depending on how much we want to inject. And most commonly we use a 30 gauge needle to inject so that it is uh, minimally uh, painful. The dose per site is also quite variable but the normal recommended dose is uh, anywhere between 2 to 5 international units per site. We normally start with a dose of 2.5 international units at each site. Uh, this is also very convenient because with the reconstitution that we had where the 50 unit uh, vial is reconstituted with 2 ml of saline. The final concentration is 2.5 international units uh, per 0.1 ml. Therefore, at each site we need to inject 0.1 ml from the tuberculin syringe. The normal sites of injection again vary from uh, doctor to doctor. Uh, different neurologists and ophthalmologists have different protocols as to where to inject. Uh, the central part of the upper eyelid is to be avoided as it uh, causes more uh, incidence of ptosis as a complication in the post-injection period. Also the medial uh, part of the lower eyelid is avoided as it is thought that some of the uh, toxin may diffuse and affect the inferior oblique muscle causing diplopia in these patients. Uh, some people also uh, inject the 
um, side above the eyebrow but here we inject two sides just below the eyebrow two sides medially and laterally on the upper lid and the lateral canthus and also inject the lateral part of the lower eyelid in uh, cases of hemifacial spasm we also inject in the cheek after observing the uh, area where the muscles are most active uh, the area just around the lips is to be avoided as this can cause uh, paralysis of the uh, orbicularis oris on that side which will lead which may lead to drooling of saliva in the post injection period uh, which the patients are very uncomfortable with we mark the injection sites with a marking pen and we then inject with the uh, needle kept tangential uh, we do not want to keep it perpendicular because the injection is to be uh, placed just near the superficial orbicularis muscle. A deeper injection would place the toxin uh, nearer to the levator palpebrae muscle and cause more ophthalmosis in the post-injection period. These injections are hardly painful when used with a 30 gauge needle. After the injections, uh, the patient can get uh, cold ice packs if there is any uh, problem. And this is the patient after the injection after a week where we do observe a mild dosis on the left side but uh, the patient does not have any uh, hemifacial spasm at all and is very comfortable with the results. The dosis uh, is a very frequent complication of botulinum toxin injection. In many studies it, the incidence of dosis has been reported to be as high as uh, 45%. Uh, most of the patients uh, the dosis uh, recovers in about 2-3 to three weeks. And uh, considering that these patients were severely incapacitated before the injection, they don't really mind the doses unless uh, they are very cosmetically uh, conscious. So to summarize, uh, botulinum toxin is a very effective treatment for cases of hemifacial spasm and blepharospasm which are sometimes severely incapacitated by their condition. Uh, the injection provides prompt relief and lasts anywhere from 4 to 6 months. Some patients have a lesser incidence of this uh, problem after the injection, but most patients uh, come back to their pre-injection position in a period of uh, 8 to 10 months, necessitating a repeat injection in many cases. All the patients must also be explained that they may have certain transient side effects like ptosis in the post-injection period. Uh, there can also be cases where the lid may turn a little outward or inward, causing irritation. But all of these uh, side effects are transient and would resolve on their own by 2-3 to three weeks. Most patients are quite happy and satisfied with their results and along with the Botox, this newer preparation of Botogeni available in the Indian market can also be used uh, which is uh, cheaper than the Botox available. Thank you very much.